My name is Iyad Saryadeen, Manager of Technical Marketing for the Identity Services Engine, and I'm going to take a couple of minutes to do a quick demo on how we can use Identity Services Engine to help us manage device administration using TACAC+. So what is device administration? Device administration refers to the management of network devices that make up the infrastructure of any given corporation, large or small. This is really about controlling the management of switches, routers, wireless controllers, firewalls, and more. Depending on the size of the business, you may have one team or multiple teams tasked with configuring and managing these devices. For example, in a large enterprise, you may end up with multiple teams, such as the network team or the security team, where the network team manages the switches and routers and the security teams manage the firewalls, IPS, etc. Further divisions of duty may be based on other factors such as locations, etc. Starting with ICE 2.0, we are able to write rule-based access policies to control what member and what team is able to do what type of configurations on what type of device. So with that, let's get into the demo. Okay, so I'm connected to uh, ICE 2.0 and we can see the dashboard. The first thing I want to talk about is work centers. In ICE 2.0, we have uh, two new work centers, one for TrustSec and the other one for device administration. So let's go ahead and get into the device administration overview. This is the place where if you're new to ISC, probably it's good to start there uh, in terms of configuring device admin, so we can prepare, define, and also go live and monitor. So under the prepare phase, we can uh, create profiles and command sets. These are the command sets that we will end up using in the when we are uh, configuring the policy. Also uh, under uh, prepare, you can see the migration tool. You can use that uh, to help migrate from ACS to ICE. Under the define, this is where we actually create the policies, and we're going to get into that in a minute. And the last thing is you can obviously write reports under monitor. So with that, let's go ahead and take a look at the devices that we have in the system. So I do have a good number of devices, but uh, before writing policy, it's always a good thing to do is group these devices in different groups, such as... Uh, based on device type, for example, uh, network devices versus security devices, as I mentioned earlier. Um, we normally see that in corporations, different teams, and based on location also, east and west coast. So let's go ahead and expand that a little bit more. And we can see iOS devices, wireless devices fall under network devices and and um, we got firewall, IPS, and VPN under security devices. A little bit more on the location, you get the idea. So now that we have uh, the structure built, and we can go ahead and start writing policies. So let's get into policy sets. And uh, just like anything we do in ICE, you have the policy sets that you can write. And here we have a couple of them. We have uh, a policy set for iOS devices and one for wireless LAN controllers. So if I go ahead and click on the iOS devices, um, we can uh, start from top to bottom. It says that if a device belongs to a device type of iOS, then uh, let's take a look at the authentication policy. And here we are authenticating uh, the administrators to uh, to Microsoft AD. So looking at the authorization policy, we can write authorization policies similar to those written for other use cases in ICE, such as secure access or BYOD. So uh, from top to bottom, uh, we have the condition right here. So I'm writing policies, differentiating between help desk team and security team, and some of that also based on location. So I've got help desk west, East and Security West and East. So let's take a look at one of these policies. And if I were to uh, hover and, and look at it in more detail, we'll see that the condition 
I'm, I'm matching against the group NAD and uh, for the administrators and device location is the West Coast. So with that, um, we go ahead and get done. So once we match uh, the conditions on the left, then we can go ahead and take action. And the action would be one is to set the shell profile. And what we're talking about here is the iOS shell profile, which normally gets the value between one and 15. And the other thing is uh, the command sets. So we have different command sets for different groups. So let's take a look at how we defined these uh, command sets. Uh, so right here, for example, we do have a list of command sets starting with uh, with help desk. We can take a look at that. And if I were to do edit on that, we'll see for the help desk folks, uh, they can execute the following commands. They can do a show, trace route, uh, and they can do for troubleshooting ping and debug. But they are denied from doing a config. So that means if they try to do a conf t, uh, that command would fail. Okay, let's get back to policy sets and take a look at the wireless LAN controller policy. Uh, so doing the same thing here, once we match that the device is a wireless device, we uh, also authenticating those users to Microsoft AD and taking a look at the authorization policy this one looks a little bit different because the behavior of how we control wireless devices is a little bit different than the iOS devices. On iOS devices, we do a lot of command sets in terms of how we control who can configure what. On the wireless controller, we're actually managing things based on a role, and each role will give you access to certain menus uh, when you're doing configuration, for example. Here for help desk, we want to have them um, only be able to monitor, uh, whereas a security person, they will have more access. So we're giving them the security access role. And uh, again, if we were to take a look at the profiles uh, for that, starting with the monitor only, uh, we can edit, scroll down, and we'll see the role here is actually the value is monitor. And then if we look at the security access, we, uh, we get a little bit more access right here. For this specific role, you should be able to have access to the security menu and also the commands menu on the WLC. So with that, let's go ahead and show you what happens from the admin perspective. So I'm going to get into the WLC login. And in here, I'm logging in first as person named B. Jones, who is from the help desk team. And we'll see that he has access to be able to view the menus. And as I get into security, I'm gonna to try to configure something. So we'll go ahead and do that. We're gonna to try to configure, for example, another radius server. So I'll enter the information. But when I try to apply, we'll see that the authorization failed. If I log out and log back in, under a different user, this time Tom, who is from the secure access team. And we get into security and try to do the same thing, which is create a new AAA server. And when I apply, we'll see it did accept it this time. The last part of the demo is to take a look at um, the monitoring part. So if I go ahead and uh, click on operations, 
and go to the TACAC life log. Notice this is a new introduction in ICE 2.0. It's a different log from the radius one. I should be able to see what we just did in terms of uh, uh, the monitoring aspect of it that we now um, see the two logins, one from B. Jones and the other one from Tom from uh, the Secure Access team.